Hey guys, well, it's an end of an era. My dream car is uh, going. So uh, stick around for the episode, find out why. But uh, I'm gonna do a quick walk around of my current uh, tow vehicle, my daily, and then uh, we'll get to check in on what the new replacement is for my 2014 Mercedes ML63 AMG and one final cold start for good measure. You guys might be wondering why am I selling this AMG and the simple simple answer is it's not really a practical tow vehicle um, it's super comfortable don't get me wrong um, for those of you that, that don't really know the backstory to this you know it was really I'm a I'm a big car nut um, outside of my kind of fishing side of things so a really passionate car enthusiast and I thought this would be a really good way to kind of combine the two passions of automotive as well as fishing so while this car's been absolutely fantastic to drive um, it's an absolute animal for those that don't know it's a 5.5 litre v8 by turbo engine um, this one's also equipped with the amg factory performance pack which gives it an extra 30 kilowatts and 60 newton meters of torque so that bumps the numbers up to oh, about 308 oh no 406 kilowatts and 760 newton meters of torque so um and zero to 100 in about 4.4 seconds uh, thereabouts so it's it's frighteningly quick for such a big car but there's just a couple of things um that i'll talk about in terms of you know ownership and maintenance and day-to-day -day driving that just doesn't make it as practical as the next vehicle that we're going to be picking up this afternoon so uh yeah this is my last day with it i've really been just babying it for the last couple of weeks um, i'm going to be trading it in and um yeah whoever the new owners are good luck to them all the very best with it um, as i said i've owned the vehicle for three years um, prior to this uh, amg i owned a 2011 fj cruiser from new and uh, that was a fantastic car i'm a big fan of petrol engines don't like the new diesels um, they're really highly strung, especially the low capacity uh, engines. So those two twos, 2.5s, two three liter engines. I just really think that they really have to work super hard these days. I think the new emissions laws, the DPF filters, the injectors, there's just a few things that I don't like about them. And for the amount of uh, petrol or fuel savings in a diesel um, over the lower purchase price of a petrol, I find the petrol engines a lot more reliable in this day and age. But that's just my personal opinion, and I don't do the huge kilometres that I used to. So, anyway, we'll talk more about uh, the ML, this car, why why I'm selling it uh, in a little bit. One of the biggest reasons that, um, you know, from a day-to-day -day perspective, I'm not a huge fan of the car and it's, it's just not super practical for what I do is these big 21 inch wheels behind me. So the fronts are, let me just double check. What are we looking at? 295s and I think the rears, I think they're all the same actually. They're not staggered on this particular car. Uh, let me just double check again. Yeah, 295, 35. 21s and it's the the 35 there that shows us how much a sidewall I've got um, and as as careful as I can be I still make mistakes and I still put gutter rash on the wheels 
and they're just not practical around town like you've got to be so careful um even just parking nice and close everything's just so much smaller these days in terms of parking areas um let alone the price of replacement tires and things of that nature it's i think the biggest factor with these cars is the upkeep on them so as i said you know it was a aspirational goal to own an amg one day in my life try to combine those two passions of cars automotive and my fishing side of things but the more i go kind of go on the more upkeep this car requires and uh, the costs really do add up with these big europeans especially something as uh you know as highly strung as this big amg behind me so that's 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 really the main reason this car is going today um, I had it in for its 100,000k service, so again, taking a little step back, uh, might get somewhere a bit more comfortable and sit down with you guys. So, I've had the car for three years now. I bought it in 2018, in August. So it's been, it was three years to the day, uh, last Wednesday, I think, so my lease expired last Wednesday. And uh, so I purchased the vehicle uh, here in Victoria three years ago at uh, four years of age so the car was four years old and around 63,000 k's and at the time it was what mercedes classifies as certified pre-owned so what they offer is uh, at the time mercedes were running a three-year factory warranty on these vehicles and any vehicle that comes into their second-hand stock that's you know single owner has always been religiously serviced through mercedes gets onto this certified pre-owned program, which gives you, the the new owner of the vehicle, two years of factory-backed warranty. And that was the big selling point for me at the time, was that extra peace of mind, that guarantee that if anything major was gonna go wrong, excuse me, Mercedes was gonna look after me and take care of the vehicle. Now, along that time, so nothing major happened during those three years of ownership, uh, but in terms of regular upkeep, so probably six months after I purchased the vehicle, had to do pads and rotors, front and back. So that was probably about three grand. About 18 months or to close to two years into the vehicle, I had to do both batteries. So there's a primary and an auxiliary battery, and that was about 1500 bucks. So Mercedes tax, Euro tax, you name it. Every time you, uh, you want to do something to these cars, uh, big money. And the other big thing is those tires right there. So 290, 295s, um, 21 inch tires, not cheap. I think they're around 400, 450 a corner. Um, it's not too bad in the, in the grand scheme of things of, you know, big, big tires. Anyone who's driven four wheel drives and has replaced tires, you can't, you guys kind of know the pricing per corner. Um, it just is what it is. You gotta kind of pay to play. And then on the fuel economy side of things, look, I don't think it's too bad for what it is. A five and a half litre V8 pumping out 400 kilowatts and over 700 newton metres of torque. Um, around town, I'm probably sitting on about 18 litres. Uh, when I put my foot down, 21. And when I'm on the highway, it's probably 11. So overall, it's really, really good. Um, look, looks wise, I think it looks fantastic for a six year old vehicle or seven year old vehicle now rather. So really, Look, really been pleased with the overall ownership experience. Um, it's been a little bit on the pricey side, but it's definitely something that I've enjoyed and have been quite passionate and proud of, but uh, definitely time for a change now. So next time you guys see me, I'm gonna be at the new dealership and you guys get to check out what the new tow vehicle and my daily is gonna be. Cheers. All right, well, that uh, we're gonna be driving to our dealership. Uh, got the call, so I've been waiting for the call all day. Uh, we're probably a couple of days over from when I thought I'd be taking delivery, but it's finally here. So the car's ready for pickup, and uh, we're on our way, last drive in the Merc. All right, see you guys there. Well, here we are. I'm gonna film really quickly before I throw the old mask on. And also don't know what music's playing in the background, so I don't want to get copyrighted. But we are at Nissan in Brighton here in Melbourne, Victoria. And uh, we're going to go inside and check out the new vehicle. I'm going to do all my uh, QR code, sign in, check in, have a chat to my sales manager. And uh, we'll go from there. We are back 
uh, yeah, we're in the new car. So I didn't get to film much at the Nissan dealership. So big thanks to Brighton Nissan. Um, it's been a six month wait or almost six and a half months now um, since I ordered this car. So I went in there on the 29th of January, 2021. And today is the 9th of August, 2021. So the car arrived about a week and a half, two weeks ago. By the time it uh, you know cleared customs, got off the port, got into their holding yard, finished the finance, and then got everything ready. Uh, we were in another lockdown, so these windows aren't tinted. Um, I got that thrown in as part of the deal as well. So we've got the tow, tow bar, tow kit, everything there is installed. So the only thing that was missing was the tints. So I'm gonna go get those done at the thousand kilometer inspection. Um, and I'm not filming outside because I've got a, one of the neighbors is just doing his front uh, nature strip. So mowing and he's got the blower out. So it's a little bit noisy outside, but just getting familiar with a new car. Um, unfortunately, just due to the demand of these things, there hasn't been any of them sitting in dealerships where you can just go for a test drive, um, get in and, uh, you know, get familiar with the inside of the car, what all the buttons do. Um, I'll get the manual out and have a read. Um, but you know, first comparison between driving the Merc and this thing, this thing just feels like a bus. <laughs> it's just, it's big, um, it's heavy. Uh, the Merc obviously had that, uh, that amazing suspension system, but was obviously also a lot more complicated, more prone to having issues. Um, so it was, you know, it's one of those things I'm, I'm honestly, I'm glad about the change. Really looking forward to, to enjoying this car for the years to come. Um, but yeah, just sitting here, got the car running, yeah, just getting familiar, put all my stuff uh, into the center kind of console area. It's all, you know, I'll open it up for you guys, but got some Panadol, got Sunnies, mints, uh, sanitizer, a few tissues, just the, just the usual kind of stuff, nothing fancy there. And then uh, I'll do a, a better kind of walkthrough of the interior exterior once um, my neighbor's finished mowing his yards but uh yeah otherwise fantastic so much space especially in that back seat area it's probably hard to tell uh from here but um i'll jump in there and show you guys just how much leg room there is um, and in terms of plans just want to talk about as well so a couple of things that will be changing i don't like keeping cars stock uh, life's too short to drive stock cars. So first things first, we've got a Talkit catback exhaust going on this Friday. So that's been booked in. Um, I've had the exhaust sitting at home for probably five weeks now. Um, picked that up in mid-June when there was a special on up in Queensland. Um, I've got some wheels and tires coming towards the end of this month. So I just spoke to the guys before and they're still probably two to three weeks away. Um, so that will be the biggest visual kind of change on the car and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that looks. Um, they're in the similar size to what was on the Merc actually, uh, but just a lot, obviously a lot more sidewall. Uh, stock tires on these are 265 7018s and we're gonna be going up to 295 7018s um, and on a bigger rim with more, with different offset. So uh, I think it's gonna look really good. Yeah, so I won't won't spoil the surprise. I'll uh, do a little video once we do some more mods, um, and then we'll do a quick quick walk around, and then we'll wrap up this particular episode.
All right, you guys, it is the next day. So day two of ownership. The car still has a total of 17 kilometers on the odometer. Um, so I've got the baby seat behind me that's going in first thing this morning. Um, I'll give you guys a cold start, see what this vacuum cleaner sounds like before Friday, before our first real mod happens, where I've got the Torquet Catback exhaust going on this car to make it sound like a real V8. So uh, yeah, let's hear how she sounds for now and then we'll wrap up the video and uh, you guys will get to see all the upcoming modifications in future vlogs. Well, as expected, that sounded pretty weak. As I said, sounds exactly like a vacuum cleaner. So not for much longer, Friday morning. So uh, three days from now. Um, all right, guys, that's it really stoked with the car um obviously don't have much of much experience in the car to tell you guys more about it what i like what i don't like but i will be talking about that in future episodes hope you like this one and i'll see you guys next time cheers